Okay, hi there. This is Julie with Infinity Bouquets. Um, what we're going to be doing today is focusing on pressed flowers. Um, I don't know um, how you press your flowers or, or if you've ever pressed flowers. Um, what I do with mine, you can kind of see how they turn out here. Um, they are flat, but they're not the same as some other pressed flowers that you press between, um, say, books or something. Um, what I do is I actually press them into a regular press and then put them into a freeze dryer. So what you're left with a lot of times is um, a lot more color than you would see in a regular pressed flower. Um, these ones came to me pretty much like this. Um, so when you're freeze drying flowers, you're going to get whatever they look like, they're gonna come out like. Um, see the roses here, there's ranuncula. Um, I do have some flowers here that will never press flat. Um, these little blushing bride proteas they will get flat for the most part. Um, I do tend to take a pair of scissors before I press them and I actually cut them in half just to get them a little bit more on the flat side with the you know the woodiness of the stems here. You're really not gonna get them as flat as you would some of the other flowers. Um, this bouquet was from a client who had a gorgeous wedding bouquet. You can see a lot of different fall colors in here. Um, I have started laying this one out. I don't know if you can see the acrylic piece. Um, this one I'm using is a 14 by 14. Um, this is a UV acrylic that I use or I order with the frame. Um, when I'm ordering this specific type of frame, I kind of feel it just helps protect the flowers a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know if the, the client is eventually going to hang this near a window or where there's sunlight, but sometimes the UV actually does help from, you know, the fading of the flowers. Um, what, what I don't do is I do not color these at all. These are all natural. Um, I'm not quite sure what these flowers, or I'm sorry, leaves were in her bouquet. They look like they're almost fake, and I can't tell exactly um, if they're fake or if they were dyed or bleached and dyed to get this color. Um, you will see this a lot in bouquets from, you know, the past couple years, there's a lot of bleached florals, a lot of dried florals, um, you know, things that may not be pressable exactly. Um, so when I'm doing my designs, I basically try to do it exactly like this. Um, I have a square frame and I'm going to make this into a bouquet, just like the bride would hold her bouquet. Um, so I kind of have it laid out with the outline first. So when I'm outlining this, um, I kind of make sure that it's even from side to side and I kind of also want to have leaves sticking out from different directions. I love how some of this um, kind of has the shape, the roundness. Um, I love things that are a little bit longer. I love the colors, the contrasting colors here. Um, and I kind of layer it a little bit to fit what I think would look best. Um, sometimes I go off of a picture of the bouquet and I say, okay, well, you know, there was a rose here, um, there was a rose here, and it's all intermingled. Sometimes I just kind of make it up. So this one was more made up because it was not necessarily a round bouquet. It had a lot of different elements to it, a lot of dried elements. Um, small flowers were more on one side, large were on another. Um, there was the odd pin cushion protea that definitely is not gonna go flat. So I kind of cut pieces and flattened them. So I'm gonna kind of intersperse the little hairs, I guess you would call them, 
around there. Um, so you'll see when I'm doing this how it's going to look and how the layers will look with kind of the larger flowers. Um, I did cut this rose here um, because you don't want a really, really thick frame. So when I go to lay this, which will probably be the first one I do, um, that way other flowers will layer on top of it. You won't see that it's cut in half. And I do that for a couple different reasons. Um, specifically more for the thickness because you're doing a floating frame here. So when I go to lay my next piece of acrylic on top, um, it'll definitely fit into my frame. It's a wooden frame that we are using, um, but we're getting the floating look. So you definitely don't want um, it to be too thick. Um, with this frame in particular, you do have this rabbit depth here, so you have a depth that you're going to be using on the frame itself. You cannot use too thin of a frame, especially with these kind of flowers. There are many types of frames that I can use that are thinner. Um, I use a lot of brass frames. Um, of course, this is gonna all stick to this now. Um, I use a lot of the hanging brass frames, um, hanging silver frames, and those just require a little bit thinner flowers, um, not quite like these. Um, I tell clients that, you know, certain flowers are not going to fit into certain things, like the nice metal frames that you're seeing. Um, you're not going to get a very thin frame with giant peonies, roses, um, they're not going to fit unless I take them completely apart and redo them um, petal by petal, which I really don't like to do. Um, it takes quite a bit more time and effort, um, and it takes away from the look of the actual flower. Um, the way I like to do my designs and the way I like to present them to the clients. Um, everyone has their own method of pressing flowers and their own look. Um, when I'm pressing flowers, I like to get some of the, you know, the layers in there. I like it to look like this. The ranuncula itself is a gorgeous fluffy flower. I like the look of a little bit squished petals making it appear more fluffy but flat. Um, I've seen very many different preservationists, um, very many different people who press them petal by petal to where you can see the different petals on a ranunculum. Um, if you like their style, you're probably going to go with the way they press their flowers. Um, and what I kind of tell everyone here while I'm talking and doing this at the same time is that, you know, you go with the style you like. Um, there's a hundred million different styles. There's so many of us preservationists out there that there's no need to go with someone that you're not going to be happy with the final product. Um, so a lot of times what I do while I'm in the here um, is I actually have a fun way of holding these down. I use chess pieces. So we're going to play a little chess um, just to hold them down just a little bit. I'm not biased here. I like my white pieces and black pieces. Um, I can play either side here. Um, we're not the Queen's Gamut. We are not going to be professional chess players here. But they work wonders when you're trying to hold something down. Um, what you're seeing me do is starting to work on this piece that I kind of have. Um, something that comes in handy is a trusty pair of tweezers. Um, I, you obviously can get these tweezers just about anywhere. Um, the glue that I like to use, I use a little bit of 
Mod Podge. Um, it's the matte. I love it. It's a thin glue. It dries really nicely. It holds to acrylic. It holds to glass um, very nicely. As long as you get it held down a little bit longer, there's, you know, there's always some flowers that don't set correctly in there. But one of the things that I like is I use a little paintbrush, a regular little paintbrush, paint a little bit of glue on. And when I go to set down, I'm using my hands right now. A lot of times I'll use those too. Um, see, I don't always remember how I do this. So it's, you know, just a fun little puzzle. So when you're seeing this, so basically I'm taking all my little pieces. I don't really get, I'm almost out of glue on this one, but you don't need too much glue. I just kind of tap a little glue onto the base here. And it doesn't have to look pretty. It dries in any manner. Um, you're not looking at the back necessarily anyway. Um, you're looking, you're gonna be looking at this front piece. I want this guy to kind of just come out. You know what I want? I want him to come out like this. I want it to show that way. Sometimes you get clients who send you things and you're not quite sure how to do them. Um, I don't think they know exactly what they were asking for. Like, um, well, technically, you know, they'll send you a bouquet and then you'll tell them, well, I can't flatten that.
I'm going to clean this acrylic up a lot more before um, it goes out to any client. Um, another thing that you will notice is, you'll see those tabs. Um, what I'm going to do with those tabs is, yes, I will use them, but I'm going to bend them into the back of the frame quite a bit more to where you cannot see those from the other side. Um, you'll see how the back looks here, and definitely, you want to wait for this to dry before you do anything. But you can kind of see how it turns out, um, how it looks, how I design these, how I begin them, um, and how they're going to turn out in the very end and what they will look like once they go to the client. Um, the pressed frames like this, the plexi, the acrylic on there is a little bit more bendable. So you're going to get a little bit more flex. So that girth of the flowers um, that you see is not gonna be a big deal. It fits right into the frame. Um, it's a little bit thicker in the middle than it is in the back or in the middle um, than it is on the sides. So you're, what you're really getting is a little bit more girth, a little bit more pop from your flowers when they're not pressed in a regular press. Um, again, these are freeze-dried flowers. Um, that's the basis of my business. Um, I don't only press flowers, I freeze-dry them as well, and I add them into shadow boxes. Um, I will do a class here on how they go into shadow boxes um, so you get an idea of what us preservationists do when they are um, going into a shadow box, how they fit, um, because that is an, in another class that um, takes a lot more work um, where everything is again off the stems similar to this um, what you're getting with pressed flowers is a lot more of a vintage look um, the sky's the limit um, you can make your pressed frame look as vintage as you want you can make it look as fresh as you want um, this one's going to turn out more vintage because she has all these vintagey colors a lot of dried fall colors in her bouquet um, and someone that's going to have a lot of bright pinks um, that's going to again be something very different so each one of these is going to be different um, again what i do is i kind of do a circle around it um, and kind of fill in from there that you can lay it out to begin with um, when i first started doing this many years ago uh, i would definitely do an entire layout and then after I started doing it for quite a while, I realized um, it saves me time to just make it a puzzle and figure it out as I go. Um, there's no right or wrong reason to this. Um, all of this is what you think it looks like. Um, again, I make them the way I think looks good. Of course, I have to take my clients into consideration. Um, 
they are very important, so their style is important. Um, one thing that I do is I send them a note with instructions asking if they want it more looking like a bouquet or if they want it more spread out, what I call a deconstructed style, which I can definitely show you in another class as well, on how to lay something out like that to make it flow on a frame. Um, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time for one of my other classes.